All right, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about impulse and momentum. And I'm going to explain to you what happens when an object comes to rest uh, on, an, on a flat surface and using the concepts of impulse and momentum. So this problem says that there's a one kilogram box dropped from a height of two meters. Eventually, it hits the floor and comes to rest. Assuming the box takes 0.1 seconds to come to rest, find the average force that the floor exerts on the box and the peak force that the floor exerts on the box. And I have this one kilogram box here. That's what's falling. While it's in the air at this particular point, there's just the force of gravity acting on it. But then I'm going to go through each particular step here as it's making its impact. Okay, so this is the same box here. This is one kilogram. This is one kilogram. This is one kilogram, like this. So the box is falling. Okay, it's in free fall. It hits the floor. And what happens is the floor starts to push back on it. Now this, this force that the floor pushes back on the box is not a constant force, it's actually varying. And it's gonna be more than the force of gravity. You see how this is much larger here, okay? So uh, what I can do is I can write here that this is, this is the force normal here. And then as the object is coming to a rest still, it's still moving, there's a peak force here. So this is the normal and we would call this the peak. and then it's going back down on this side and then eventually the normal will just equal gravity again. But I want to emphasize the point here that while this object is coming to rest you do not have a constant force acting on it. And when we use impulse to find that it's a very simplified version of this. We're just going to find the average value. Okay? So you see how this kind of makes the shape of a curve like this? If I went through time we would see that that's actually going to make the shape of a, a sine squared curve. Sine squared is a function of time. Okay, so force coming off the floor is really a function of uh, so, you know some constant or some function times the sine squared of t. So we would just say that it's proportional to that. Let's just say it's proportional, just to keep it simple for now. So the force on the floor as a function of time is proportional to sine squared t. Okay, so I'm going to go down here and just solve this problem very quickly, uh, just to show you how easy this is. So we have this object here. It's dropped from this height of two meters like this. So here's two meters. I'm going to use my energy to compare uh, points A here and point B here. We can call this point C. We can call this point D. Okay. So from point A I can say the energy at A equals the energy at B, the mechanical energy of the system. So the potential energy at A equals the kinetic energy at B. This is right before impact. So mgh equals one half mv squared and then that just becomes, the, the masses cancel here. So the speed right before impact is going to be v is the square root of, multiply the two over here, okay, 2gh. Okay. So when I'm dealing with impulse, I'm basically going to say that the impulse the J, which is impulse, this is in newtons times seconds, is the change of momentum, okay? And that's going to equal M delta V, and that's going to equal F delta T. When I say F, I'm talking about the average force here, so the average. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to solve for my, my average force here. So I'm going to say M V final minus V initial equals the average force times the change of time. What am I looking for here? I'm looking for the average force, and I have everything else. So the mass was one. The V final is zero minus the V initial, and it was going down, right? So I have to make this negative square root of two GH, square root of two times 10 times two, close parentheses equals average force times 0.1. Okay, so what am I going to end up getting there? I'm going to simply end up getting um, the square root of 40 equals average force times 0.1. So the average force, I can take out a 2 out of this and make that 2 root 10. 2 root 10 over 0.1, okay, because that's 4 times 10, right? And then the 4 comes out as a 2. And then that's just going to equal 20 root 10 newtons up, okay, up, because that's a positive, I got a positive answer for that, okay? Now, that's the average force, so what's the peak force? Well, the peak force 
is simply going to be twice the average force in this case. Okay, so my peak force is going to be 40 root 10 newtons up. Okay, so that's my average force. and that's my peak force right there. So we found really an average value here somewhere along this line there was an average there was just an average value that we found along here just whatever that is so I'm gonna make that a dash, dashed line here so you can see it so somewhere along here there was some average force here like this so that average force right there was force average which is force so that force right there was the average force whatever that was and we said that that was going to be 20 root 10 newtons up right and then we had a peak force here which was just twice the average force and that's going to equal 40 root 10 newtons up and again, this is twice the value of the average because the average value of the sine squared function is half of the peak. It's, it's just a coincidence that it's half. There's no reason that it should be half. If we took the sine function, it would be like 0.6 or something. So that's why it's twice the value. All right, so that's, that's it for this problem. So we evaluated the concept of an object falling using energy, finding the speed before it hits the ground. Then we found using impulse and momentum we found the average force and then we found the peak force modeled by this this function this sine squared t function I'll go into this function a little bit later sine squared uh, t uh, it's very important in terms of electricity magnetism too there's a lot of functions that work off of this premise uh, and the average value works out very nice to uh, one half I'll do that proof a little bit later alright that's all I've got for now thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon